Hey guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics. Let us continue our discussion with respect to the solution to model question paper for the subject VLSI design and testing. In my previous video, I have explained these first module questions, uh, tri-state inverter. And in this question, I have made a mistake in my previous video where the DE transistors in pull-up network need to be connected like this, means in parallel. In my previous video, I have made a mistake and connected in series in a pull-up transistor. And this is the correct circuit for the expression given y is equal to a into b plus c plus de whole bar. So this gives the correct result. Then come to the next question, d flip-flop is explained, CMOS inverter is explained with respect to regions in that video. And also we have derived the expression for v out. Then derivation for the drain current of MOSFET in non-saturation and saturation region, I have explained it in the previous video. If you have not visited that, visit there and come back to this video. And also the problem related to past transistors is discussed and the solutions are given. Now let us start the next question solutions. Here the question is from module 2, the first question, explain various steps in CMOS N-well process with necessary diagrams. They have asked to write the N-well process and with diagrams. But here the P-well process is shown. You need to convert this P-well process into N-well process in your answer. So the thing is, in the parent N substrate, P-well is created here. So for N-well, what we need to do? In the parent P substrate, we need to create the N-well. So here the changing uh, change what we need to do is that in place of N, we need to write P substrate and the indications correspond to that. And in place of P well, we need to create N well. So when we create the N well, we need to diffuse the P diffusion in that place. That's why what we need to do, take this N well at left side, create the N well at the left side and keeping the N substrate as it is. And then the polysilicon deposition will be same. Your N well will be at the left side here. There will be no well at the right side. And then we need to diffuse P. Why? Because in the N well, we need to diffuse P diffusion we need to make so that it will create a P transistor. And at the right side, uh, for the N diffusion, we need to uh, do the N diffusion in P substrate. So parent P substrate will be there. In that, you are going to diffuse N. So this step is also same. And the next thing is that you need to write this diagram. Here the cross-sectional view of N-well process. You can see the well is at the left side here. And you have created two P diffusions that will be act as a P transistor. And at the right side, you have two N diffusions that will be for the N transistor. And N transistor source will be connected to ground. Here it is VSS. And P transistor source will be connected to VDD. And two drains are taken for output. And gate and gate are connected for input. So this is the N-well CMOS inverter you are supposed to write and where the N-well is at the left side. Here also I have shown the P-well process, replace that by N-well process. I hope you have understood. Then comes the second question here. With need diagrams, explain lambda based design rules for wires, contact cuts and transistors. First let me take wires here. Uh, here we have diffusions and polysilicon and metals. These are the wires we can consider. So the rule lambda based design rule says for N diffusion, the minimum width of the N diffusion should be 2 lambda and P diffusion also should be 2 lambda. And the difference, the spacing between the two N diffusions should be 3 lambda and spacing between the two P diffusions should be 3 lambda. And if any other polysilicon layer comes, in between the P diffusion or uh, N diffusion, the spacing should be 1 lambda. And for polysilicon also, the width, minimum width we need to maintain as 2 lambda and the spacing between those two is 2 lambda. For diffusions, it is 3 lambda spacing and for polysilicon, it is 2 lambda spacing and to diffusion to polysilicon, it is 1 lambda spacing. You need to write this in the same way and explain what I have explained so far. For the metals, we have two types of metals. One metal one we call it as and we represent that with a straight line and metal two the with a horizontal line. Metal one will be having minimum width of three lambda and spacing between the two metal one layers will be three lambda itself. For the metal two we need to have four lambda as width and spacing as four lambda. This is for wires. Wire in the sense it is diffusion, polysilicon and metals. 
Coming to transistors now, here NMOS, PMOS and uh, depletion type transistor is shown. The polysilicon crosses the diffusion will be a transistor. Means this one polysilicon layer and this diffusion layer crosses like this, then it will be a transistor. So, as we know, diffusion will be having 2 lambda width and polysilicon is also having 2 lambda width. So, here the vertical and horizontal lines what we take as diffusion and uh, polysilicon also having 2 lambdas. That's why the crossing will be indicated over here at the center as a channel. This channel will also be with the size 2 lambda cross 2 lambda. That is what the meaning is. Similarly, for the PMOS transistor, you need to take this P diffusion representation and horizontally taking P diffusion and vertically taking polysilicon. And if it is a depletion transistor, we know that in the depletion transistor, the channel will be already created. To show that, here is the dashed box indicating this will be called as a implant, means that is the channel representation in a depletion region. It is already created. The channel is here itself, but it is already created, will be represented with a um, dotted box like this. It will be with the size 6 lambda cross 6 lambda in our layout. And this is for the transistors. Coming to contact cuts. Contact cut in the sense, when actually the contact uh, cut comes into picture, when metal contacted with a diffusion like this, or polysilicon contacted with a metal, and polysilicon contacted with a diffusion, means different two types of layers are connected, we call it as a contact cut. Here you can see metal 1 and a polysilicon connected. So, 3 lambda will be for the metal and 2 lambda representation for the polysilicon and the two has to be connected with a contact cut like this. It will be having 4 lambda cross 4 lambda size. The metal as well as polysilicon representation will be there here. It is having 4 lambda horizontally, 4 lambda vertically and in center we will be having a cut means cut in the sense the connection we need to show darkly. That dark centering will be for 2 lambda cross 2 lambda. That is what the contact cut uh, rule is. Similarly, if you come vertically and horizontally, you need to show like this. And if it is connected uh, vertically, horizontally like this, you need to show like this. And if you have two contacts, uh, one after the other, the difference between the contact cuts inside, cut inside will be 2 lambda. And uh, you can see here, the other diagrams also showing this is via connecting between metal 1 to metal 2 when the metals are connecting we call it as a wire this wire will also be 4 cross 4 since metal 2 and metal 1s are connecting metal 2 is 4 lambda metal 1 is 3 lambda but the contact is for 4 cross 4 this is what for the wires contact cuts as well as transistors this much of diagrams and also uh, minimum explanation is required here for 6 parts then comes, draw the stick diagram for the function y is equal to a into b into c plus d whole bar. So for this, this is the circuit. In the pull down network, you can see a into b into c is there. So to get that, we need to connect the three transistors with gate inputs a, b, c in series. And d will be plus d. So we need to connect it in parallel. And in the pull up, we need to connect a, b, c in parallel series with d transistor. And at the junction of pull up and pull down networks, we need to take the output y. And pull up network will be connected to VDD and pull down network will be connected to ground. For this, let us write the stick diagram. So to write the stick diagram for this, first what we need to do, we need to take VDD as a metal and also we need to take ground. First write these two lines as VDD and ground. After writing VDD and ground, what we need to do, we need to write these four transistors and these four transistors. So for that, let me take this red color indication for the gate of the transistor and we can place four transistors over here and horizontally I am taking source and drain of the transistors. These are the P transistors representing the diffusion with blue color here and in your exam you can write without any color representation that is not required. So now here we have 4 P mass transistors and I have taken 4 N mass transistors. N mass transistor diffusion that means source drains are represented with green mark 
and the red indication that is for gates and blue indication for the PMOS diffusion. So now let us uh, name these source gate as well as drain first. So here since we have taken the output from here this is our drain of the transistor okay this is our drain. Similarly for a transistor of the pull down here we need to take the drain and also here it is drain. First we need to mark which are all the drains anyhow we know where actually we are going to take the output and similarly for the B transistor this is my source and also for the A transistor this is my source and then comes the remaining okay let me uh, mention this as source of the C transistor this is source and for the D transistor also this is source whichever the terminals connected to ground and VDD will be source and whichever the terminals connected to output are drains. Now it is easy to represent the other terminals since this is a source of the C transistor this is the drain and similarly for the B transistor this is drain similarly for the A transistor the remaining terminal this is drain and here also for the below transistors since drain is already taken this is source and here for the C transistor the other end is source already then this become drain. Now we have a choice that we can take source and drain of the transistor B however we want. Now let me write the stick diagram. So now you can see this is the complete stick diagram for the expression given. I have mentioned the terminals here clearly where is source where is drain and according to that you need to make a connection and the and where the two layers are connecting. See here the metal is connecting to diffusion in the source connections. That's why I need to connect VDD with a dark indication like this. This represents a connection. For the transistors we will be not mentioning that connection. Why? Because if you mention the connection that becomes a contact. It is not a contact. It is a crossing between diffusion and a polysilicon. So for transistors not supposed to mention the connections and whenever the two layers are connected for ground as well as for the output and also for the VDD we need to show the connections like this. This is the stick diagram for the expression given A into B into C plus D whole bar. Now the next question is construct necessary equivalent circuit circuits using RC delay model to compute the propagation delay of three input NAND gate. Three input NAND gate structure you need to write first. So for the three input NAND gate you need to write the capacitance and resistance parameters. So by taking the worst case output falling transition and output uh, pull down through the three series NMOS transistors. The three transistors are connected in series in the pull down network. Three transistors uh, P transistors are connected in parallel in the NAND gate. So we need to take the worst case output falling transition by taking output will be pulled down through the three series transistors whenever they are on. By taking the output falling means output will be zero. When actually the output of the NAND gate will be zero when all the three gate inputs are one. In that case the three pull down transistors will be on and the pull up transistors will be off. And then uh, taking the worst case of rising transition, rising transition in the sense at least two PMOS transistors will be off at least one transistor will be on that can be considered as a rising transaction. According to that upper two NMOS transistors are still on we can say and bottom one is off. And the series capacitance of upper two uh, NMOS must also be discharged during the falling transactions in the worst case. So by considering these cases we need to write the RC equivalent circuit when the output is falling like this and also RC equivalent circuit when the output is rising by taking the worst cases. So this is what the uh, answer for RC delay model to compute the propagation delay of the 3 input NAND gate. You can see here the complete transistors capacitance are shown in this diagram. And then the next question is make use of the necessary waveforms to define the following terms propagation delay, uh, contamination delay, rise time delay, fall time delay and edge rate. It is the maximum time from the input crossing 50% to the output crossing 50%. You can see here this is the input signal this is the output signal as we know in the CMOS circuits when input rises output will be falling down. We need to consider the time at which input is crossing 50% of the value and we need to take the output which is crossing 50% below 
that time will be called as propagation delay. You can see this is the propagation delay when the output is falling and similarly this is the propagation delay when the output is rising we can say. Then we have contamination delay. Contamination delay time is that minimum time from the input crossing 50% to the output crossing 50%. Here we need to take the minimum time and the propagation delay says it is the maximum time. Then what is rise time? Rise time is that time for the waveform to rise from 20% of the value to the 80% of the value. From here you can see the rise time from 20% of the total output to the 80% of the total output. Suppose if you take 1 volt as the maximum value it will reach 0.2 volts to 0.8 volts. What is the time it is going to take to reach that value is rise time. Similarly falling from 0.8 to 0.2 will be taken as fall time. And the next thing is edge rate. Edge rate in the sense it is adding the rise time as well as fall time and taking the average of that divided by 2 is edge rate. Then we have the next question. Make use of necessary circuit diagram to compute the logical effort of the following gates. Here two input NOR gate need to be explained and three input NAND gate need to be explained. In the diagram you can see this is an inverter. Uh, we need to take the inverter as reference. Why? Because the logical effort says it is the ratio of input capacitance of the gate to the input capacitance of an inverter that can deliver the same output current. So we need to take the uh, inverter as reference. So better to write the inverter also in your answer. So here C in is equal to C3, G is equal to 3 by 3. Uh, in the denominator we need to take the inverter capacitance into consideration. Similarly, for the 3 input NOR gate is shown over here. Uh, since, uh, sorry, 3 input NAND gate. In the 3 input NAND gate, 3 series transistors and 3 parallel transistors. So C in is 5 here. Why? Because 3 plus 2 is 5. And we need to divide uh, the capacitance of the inverter consideration. That is 3. 5 divided by 3 is the logical effort for the 3 input NAND gate. Here 3 input NOR gate is shown. It is uh, 6 plus 1, 7. For the single input I am telling, 7 by 3 for the 3 input NOR gate. In the question they have asked 2 input NOR gate. You can see in the table for the NOR gate of 2 input it will be 5 by 3. Why? Because here we will be having 2 transistors in pull up and 2 transistors in pull down. Since it is a 2 input NOR gate. Here the 3 input is shown, just convert this into 2 input NAR gate and write. And uh, it is 5 divided by 3, here it is 7 divided by 3. And that is what the answer for the uh, question for computing the logical effort. This is about the second module questions. The third module questions, let us continue in the next video. Thank you.